Oh, it's you guys. Well, you know, I got some old books. Face got dust off it, you know. And well, we're back at it again with a book review. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I have this awesome, epic, one of my favorite fantasy quartets. The Immortals Quartet. Book to Wolf Speaker by Tamora Pierce herself. I have done book one, Wild Magic, uh, 12 months back, which is basically an year if you think about it. And I really thought that I did the whole, whole color quartet on the channel, but apparently I didn't, which is quite a shocker to me because the Immortals Quartet is one of my favorite fantasy books. So, I guess it's not too late now, so I reread it. And well, let's get right on to it. Now, this main character is Dane, who possesses a magic that no other mage, wizard, sorcerer, or sorceress possesses. She possesses wild magic. A magic that she can use to talk to animals. And it's a little more than that, she finds out here. Here, here, Dane uh, has, has to enter, answer a call for help from one of her dear wolf pack. In book one, in her old village, she had had a wolf pack. She had gone crazy when bandits had murdered her mother. And so she and the wolf pack that she was friendly with together... They hunted down every last bandit and killed them. That's why Dane kind of feared while the magic that she possessed until book one where Numair, Numair Sarmelin, taught him how to use it. And you see, she's still kind of scared of it, but Numair reminds her that she creates, uh, created a barrier between the wild part of her magic and her, uh, and her mind, so it should be fine. You won't go absolutely cuckoo. So... She tries a couple new things. The new, the old good old Batcher God that she that has been taking care of her. Well, she the Batcher God is like, yeah, you have more power than you imagine. You can turn, you can go inside an animal's mind, and that's a really excellent skill. For example, uh, the wolf broke fan that had requested Dane's help. Uh, if I if I just say this, so the humans that uh, that broke Fang is living, uh, living with in the same place. The humans are like doing bad things. They're cutting down the trees. They're scaring the game away so the wolves have nothing to eat. And the wolf has the and broke Fang, the leader of the pack of wolves, has decided to retaliate. And obviously, Dane and the Broke Fang, they're very familiar with, with each other, which is why Dane tried this, this, this wolf's mind first. And what she did was she reached into the wolf's mind and saw what the wolf saw, smelled what the wolf smelled, and heard what the wolf heard. And the wolf, too, found the, the excitement and the amusement and the surprise and astonishment of what a wolf could do, the human felt, uh, Dane felt in this case, and it's really nice, and they both liked it, and she used it in uh, many occasions. And then they uncover a terrible secret. Of course, the humans in this in this valley, they're, they're scaring the wolves, they're scaring the game, it's not right, it's poisoning the waters too, but but there's something a little bit more sinister to it. A rebellion against the crown. Meanwhile, Dane must, well, gather her wild magic. And she must discover powers that she didn't know she had in order to save the kingdom. Well, from rebellion. And meanwhile, a more sinister force is behind this. A certain emperor in a certain swampy country that we'll, we'll be get knowing in the next book. And, well, the rest of it, you have to read it. Great book. The, one of the best fantasy books of them 
all. And, well, it's just really great. And, like always, your bookquester and the bookquester. A pay absolute patroner. You can't let go of it. And, well, let's be honest here. Whoever heard of wild magic? I mean, I've heard of magic. I've heard of amulets. I've heard of a lot of kind of magics and fantasy books. But I've never heard of wild magic before. And that's what this book has that other books don't have to offer.